Welcome back. Legacy point two. Your child needs a right relationship with God. And we'll start with this question, Roger. Why do we baptize babies? The answer is uh, babies need what baptism has to offer. And that is they need a right relationship with God. They need that blessing of the cross of Jesus Christ extended to them. But aren't, aren't babies born innocent? Well, <laughs> babies are born very cute. <laughs> um, and in, in many ways, um, in, in many ways innocent uh, to some of the harshness of this world. But spiritually, they have a condition that is every bit as real as the condition that you or I have, the condition of sin. And that's the truth that the Bible says. Um, it says it in Romans chapter 5. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, in this way death came to all men because all sinned. The Bible says that all people are born sinful, and that even includes babies. One of the tragic reminders of that is that uh, if we were not in the condition of sin, uh, we uh, would have a perfect life and uh, we would never encounter death. Unfortunately, we do. And unfortunately, even babies will die. Uh, and that is one of the conditions of a sinful world and a sinful person. How about this question? Are there, are there any scripture references which talk about babies being baptized? The Bible does not specifically say, I want you to baptize babies. Okay. But it does have many scripture references that seem to indicate that babies were baptized. I believe that babies are included in God's command for baptism and that we're to baptize all peoples, all nations. But there are several instances in the early church, as recorded by, um, in the New Testament, where whole families were baptized, and likely there were children, uh, very, very likely there were children in that group. Uh, for example, um, in Acts 11, uh, Cornelius uh, is baptized by Peter, he and his whole household. Lydia, in Acts 16, she and her whole household. And uh, the jailer at Philippi, um, he and his whole household. But there are scripture that Jesus talks about in placing such a high value on children and bringing them to him that certainly go hand in hand with baptism. Um, one of my favorites is Mark chapter 10. And in Mark 10, verse 14, he says this, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. He is inviting children into his kingdom. In Matthew 18, it also talks about uh, the fact that uh, you shouldn't even look down on any of these little ones, for such is the kingdom of God. It belongs to them. And the word that he uses, little ones, is the word that is, uh, in the original language, refers to toddlers, uh, paideon. So um, that is uh, an injunction, I believe, that Jesus says, bring these little children to me. I just see that baptism is a way that he reaches out that hand and touches them and gives them the blessings of what he's done for all of us. Roger, you said that uh, people are born sinful. I think of Psalm 51 where it says, in sin did my mother conceive me. Uh, and the church over the years has used that phrase and others, other scriptural references to, to create the, what we call the doctrine of original sin. And here's my question, Roger. Does baptism erase original sin? Well, Mike, the answer to sin, both original sin and active sin, is the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
Now, the Roman Catholic Church will teach that baptism erases original sin, so then you have grace given you so that you can begin to work out your life of salvation. Um, but I wouldn't see it that way. I would see it as God's, uh, as baptism delivering the gift of Jesus Christ and a relationship with him, and that is the antidote to sin. Let me give you a real quick background behind baptism. Uh, baptism was a practice first started by the Jews as they introduced non-Jews into their religion. They had what was called proselyte baptism. So, therefore, they were washed clean of their Gentileness, and they were brought into the Jewish faith. When John the Baptist came, he came with a baptism that surprised everyone because the Jews gathered around, and particularly the Jewish leaders, and he said, you need to be baptized. And baptized into this message. This message is repent. Turn from your sin and turn to God. So people came to him, and as they were baptized, it wasn't a Jewish proselyte baptism. It was identifying with the message of repentance, and it's called a baptism of repentance. So then Jesus came and commanded us to baptize. And in that, we're being connected not just to a message, but to the very person and work of Jesus Christ for us. It is Jesus giving us an identity with himself, connecting us to him. So, uh, that is a long answer for how God uses baptism to take care of our problem of sin. Another question, Roger, connected to baptizing babies is this one. Can an infant have faith? When you understand faith as a trust and not just an intellectual assent, yes, a baby can have faith because it's trust to receive what God has given. And for that matter, I believe that faith itself is a gift from God. So it's God giving us the, the gift to even receive what Jesus Christ has done. God gives us faith as a gift. But here's the issue that's really behind the question. Um, if that's the case, then why don't we just baptize babies and be done with it? Consider this. Heather, Jackson is born and in the hospital you have all your friends there and you have a great big party. Wow, isn't it great? You're a mom, and here's a new baby, and you're a family. So you take Jackson home, and when you get to the front door, you open the front door, and you, you set down the car carrier there, and you go inside, and you leave Jackson on the front porch. And you come back to check on him when he's 12 years old. Well, the image is ludicrous, uh, because... If he wasn't cared for, uh, he could not survive. And so it is with a baby being baptized. It must be connected with the teaching that goes along that nurtures that faith so that child can grow up in the faith and boldly make a personal profession that Jesus Christ is my Savior and my Lord. So uh, baptism is God's gift to us, but it comes with an assignment to mom and dad. Yes. And so we're going to talk about this in a minute. Uh, but here's the, the assignment that, that parents receive from God when they receive the gift of the child. Uh, it is your responsibility to do four things. One, create an atmosphere of trust in your home because trust is the foundation for faith. We talked about that in a previous session. Two, Teach your child about God's love. Talk to them about Jesus and why he came and how much he loves them and do it regularly. Three, set an example of what it means to be a spiritual person. 
so that your child can see what a Christian looks like. And four, pray. Pray for your child, pray with your child, and watch God work in the lives of others and in your lives as a response to the prayer that you've prayed. You do those four things, and you'll be doing well in raising your child to be a strong Christian adult. So it's time for you to discuss them now. Which of these four do you most look forward to doing? You think you'll enjoy the most? The four are on your handout. Talk about them in your small group, and we'll see you back here in a couple of minutes.